ladies and gentlemen, filmmakers and moviegoers alike, welcome to this week's episode of Perfectly Casual. I'm your host, Free Cuffs, and joining me as always is Dorky Dev. Say hi, Dev. Hello. Hi, Dev. How are you doing today? Everything good in the world of you? Yeah. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. yeah? <laughs> Just yeah. All right. Good to hear. Good to hear. Well, today, with that being said, we're just going to hop in to what we're talking about, which this week I called it Shine Bright because I'm not clever in any way, shape, or form. And, yeah, I think it's clever enough. Oh, well, thank you. You you grace me with your uh, compliments. Uh, let's see. So, um, with the first uh, movie we're talking about being The Shining by Stanley Kubrick, and then Doctor Sleep, the new movie that just came out by the director whose name I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, uh, Mike Fla- uh, Flanagan. 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 <laughs> okay. Uh, who did uh, like House on Hunting Hill? Okay. Sweet. All right. So, anything you want to say or do before we get into talking about The Shining? Uh, no, I got nothing else. Rest. We're just good to go. All right, we're good to go. All right, let's start. Let's talk about The Shining. This was a weird poster, and I grabbed it. I was like, interesting. I can't see it at the moment because I'm uh, signing in under our account real quick. Okay. Because uh, I'm changing something that I forgot to change last week. Ah, yes. Okay. <laughs> so give me a moment. No and worries. Then I can check out the poster. All right. I see the poster now. Yeah. What the? F- yeah, yeah, no, I saw that before. What the fuck? <laughs> I don't know how that's any part related to this movie, but I mean, I guess I kind of understand how it's any part related to this movie, but it doesn't quite look like it relates to the movie. No. Must be a treat teaser in some way, but I'll appreciate that. They don't give it all away mm-hmm. with the poster. Yeah, it's like very movies. minimal. That being said, I'd wear it on a shirt. I'd wear that. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about the actual movie. So, The Shining. My first thoughts. I still love it. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, without a doubt. This is still, like... Can I, we've been in a bit of a horror rut as of late. Mm-hmm. Man, was this just... This was nice. This was a... I like this week. This, for me, I'm happy. This, Yes, this was a nice week. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Um, you're going to hate me because I still have complaints, but I still like this. You always do. Exactly. Um, But, like, this one especially, like, man, I mean, there's some things that, like, just based off of the fact that it's, what, how old is this film? Uh, 80? Yeah, this came you out in 1980. 39 year old film. Um, it's, it's been a few years. Um, so there, there are certain things related to film that we've changed and we've just gotten better with. Um, probably my biggest critique is some of the cuts. Just, they're very dumb. Um, and it doesn't feel like this serve a purpose other than to just, like, either to break tension or create tension. That's all they seem to do. Yeah. Which isn't a bad thing to the film, but it's just, it's, there are other ways that could do it better. Absolutely. Um, I, that was one of my big complaints too, while watching this movie again, was this, especially in the beginning, how it's like, okay, we're at this time. Now it's a month later. Now it's a week later. Now it's two days 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 later. Now we're going hour by hour. And then it's like, oh God, what the hell? Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> just the passage of time and how they presented it through just hard cuts, no solid transitions. It's like... This movie is really good at prevent, like building up suspense and tension. And yes. occasionally it has some pretty damn freaky moments. But it how it tells the passage of time is pretty damn bad. <laughs> yes. That's, that's this worst thing. Also, what the hell is with us in films and ending up with whenever... Why is it the only... <laughs> I can't think of any other films that have had female nudity. Um, but whenever they do, why is it always old women who are, like, also, like, some sort of demonic thing? Hey, Baba Yaga was pretty damn... I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm just saying. <laughs> why, what is that? why is this the thing we have, we've been doing? Whenever we watch films, I can't remember a film that has had just 
you know, boobs in it that were regular boobs. I mean, they all, they're always old lady like who's rotting away um, and because, trying to. So it, it's Go because ahead. we watch scary movies, and only scary movies have boobs now because violent movies have to be funny, and they can't have be funny and have boobs in them. This that would make it too schlocky, you know. And tell it to the boys. I think there's a scene with boobs in it. I can't remember. It's, I watched that like two months ago when it premiered. The Amazon TV show? Yeah. About superheroes? Yes. The, uh, there has to be one scene with at least boobs in it. Kind of. There's, like, there's the spoilers for the boys, the breast milk scene. With, um... It doesn't count. Well, I mean, it counts, but it doesn't count. And again, that's... I mean, there's also, like... <laughs> that's... There might be... The, the, the girlfriend. A-Train's girlfriend? Oh, her. Um, Didn't she have her boobs done at one point? I, I think swear. she had a bra, but I don't remember. The only other it's one. It's been I a little bit. I'm gonna rewatch it when we when season two comes out. Oh, so. of course. But the oh, only other God. thing I can think of is maybe Starbright, whatever her name is, when they're having sex. I don't think her boobs are out that or like visible for us though. Probably not. Ah, Anyways, <laughs> back uh, back on topic. Why are why are the only boobs we see old? rotting corpse people i'm assuming it's boobs. because we've all as children seen either our parents or our grandparents naked and it's traumatized us and they're trying to get to that inner <sighs> as a child it would be my first guess second guess because old people are kind of creepy sometimes yeah i mean i get that i'm just saying why 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 us <laughs> why does it keep having to I'm at a loss. <laughs> <laughs> Same. I don't get it. Um, but I mean that aside, man, this movie is still a fucking trip. Mm-hmm. And Holy shit! Definitely one of my favorite things still has to be just the simple cinematography, but still how effective it is with how oh, yeah. overall the whole movie is about the overlooming dauntingness of this hotel and. How it's just every single shot is in wide angles and it's all perfectly symmetrically made and like it's very aesthetically pleasing all throughout the whole movie except for when it gets freaky and when you're getting into those interpersonal parts and then it gets all tight and cramped and like the whole movie is wide and then suddenly it's tight and you feel claustrophobic and I love it. It's just very simple but very useful and very dramatic. And the other thing too is this film is only really like two it's really like i watched uh screen rants uh the shining thing they did okay and they have a point it's really three different types of shots it, or scenes mm-hmm. it's walkings yep walkings and talkings mm-hmm. or close-ups mm-hmm. had... there isn't a ton of other kinds of shots Mm-hmm. Um, but also there's only three people really in the film. Yeah. Um, so, eh, um, you can get away with it. Uh, and, but it still works really, really well. So, uh, I just, it's still just, and also, I mean, it has some of the, um, those iconic lines. Um, women can't live without them. <laughs> Yeah, 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 the whole thing, and then, I mean, I always, here's Johnny, of course. Oh, God, yeah. It always stands out. And that, like, only because I really enjoy Ready Player One, we ain't got no business in room 237. Yeah. <laughs> um, another good, like, another fun fact about the Here's Johnny thing, I was watching uh, Hunt, Hunting in Connecticut when uh, that one where the dude gets possessed in his house and all that, and the house is haunted and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and he breaks through the uh, door. Um, as it was happening, no one else had thought about it, but immediately, this just goes to show how much I had watched this film. Like This was maybe ninth grade um, when we wa- me and my friends watched this. As the door gets busted through, you hear me in the back of the room laying on the bed, Here's Johnny! And, like, the entire room looks back at me, starts busting up laughing, and rewinds it. And they they, they proceed to riff off my joke. Um, 
<laughs> Again, I, I I watched a lot of film growing up, mm-hmm. old you know, 80s to you know early 90s films, and this is one of those. I mean, what else were we lot. supposed to do when we weren't at band practice? Socialize or at a friend's? Well, yes, <laughs> I was outside at a friend's place if I wasn't home or at band. Um, we definitely weren't out and about really because it was either too damn hot or it was too damn boring. Yes. Um, at best, you went to the park and played street football. Mm. Um, so we didn't go out much. I mean, with me, it was, at least with me and Tristan, it was, let's go to Walmart and walk around for a little while because we can't afford anything. And then we'd go back to our place. And then we'd, after like a couple hours, go back to Walmart and walk around for a little while. Because after a while, you're bound to find somebody and just hang out with them in Walmart for a little while. And then you split ways and then you find somebody else. Then you hang out with them in Walmart for a little while. <laughs> Split ways. Funny enough, I've ran into Stephen at that Walmart before. <laughs> Funny enough. <laughs> yeah, it works. You get to talk to a lot of people. It's Kingman. There's not much to do. No, there wasn't. Um, but yeah, no. So it was like it was a fun. This was a fun trip down memory lane. Like just because it, it is honestly like Stanley Kubrick is. <laughs> He's a legend in a lot of ways. Um, he, I wouldn't, if I ever went into acting and was able to time travel to work with one director, I would never work with Stanley Kubrick because he is mind bendingly like just. I, I don't know how to describe it. How like how he directs it? It, it, it there's control freak, and then there's Stanley Stanley Kubrick. Yeah, you mean you don't want to sit there and do forty six takes of you just taking a sip of coffee and putting it back down? Or yeah, pretty much. You don't want to sit there forty six takes of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Over, I'd rather not. Over and over. Yeah, I admit. The man's a fucking visionary genius. Um, and the fact that he can't keep making films because he passed away sucks. But at the same time, like, I would... If if I ever had the opportunity to... Like, and let's say he, he was still around and I was acting, I would never, ever, <laughs> unless I was being paid pretty well, work in a Stanley Kubrick film, unless I was like, you know what? Unless it was just that one day that, like, that manic part of my brain's like, let's sign it. <laughs> let's do. Let's go. <laughs> and then halfway through production, my brain's like, I made a mistake. I'm sorry. Can we go back? <laughs> Is it too late to quit yeah. it? I would like to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. No more. Please. Okay. I mean, like, he, he does a lot of, like, it's just one of my favorite scenes, without a doubt, are those goddamn fucking scenes on the trike. The big wheel? Mm-hmm. The sound design of that those scenes is terrifyingly like it, it, it sends chills down your back. Mm-hmm. Just the like the sound of the wheels rolling, almost like a small drum, but not yeah, quite. Like, and then it hits a carpet. It's just like. It goes from like one like a a mind rattling noise to just and you just hear like just just as minimal amount of noise as possible because it's on carpet mm-hmm. and it, it's just that sound design alone it raises the tension so much in this mm-hmm. film like sound sound design is very important and like. The main reason I really love this film is because it's very minimalist. It's very simple. And using that very simple and minimalist tone that they had, it creates so much tension and, like, excitement and, like, stress and just... It's uh, it's an experience, honestly. I would well, I wouldn't say too much of an experience. That's for sure. Because I could also seeing it being boring and repetitive and like, I guess like my biggest complaint has to be um, Shelley Duvall. I don't really like her, but overall she did fine. I just don't like the way she talks. Uh, I will say. <laughs> um, 
I think part of the problem is she also plays uh, 80s non-action woman. Mm -hmm. Um, Which there wasn't much to do for (laughs) for a character like hers. Um, You could probably replace her with any other, I don't want to say damsel in distress, but like She's not exactly a damsel in distress. She does she does have a couple kick ass moments, but like overall they're they're not like she she's she's a lot of the times just working through what's happening. Mm-hmm. So it, it, she's she's not the most entertaining character, and she's not supposed to be. No. So you know, there's also that. That being said, I have one final complaint. Jack Nicholson is great. However, it's kind of like he's portrayed as being kind of crazy the whole way through. And then it just gets bad towards the end. I would have preferred it. Like, he doesn't really seem like the kindest, sanest, most, you know... That kind I of think <laughs> the thing is, he's not the way it is, is. Is he's not supposed to because the hotel does bring out the worst in people. Mm-hmm. So because you know it, it's it's not a good place, um, and it's not on ABC. I think no NBC. Um, so if you got that reference, kudos. Um, the 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 thing is so like I don't I don't think I think I think it does it slow enough where like his because he, he's he's a recovering alcoholic who's only like five months clean mm-hmm. um and I know alcoholics um that th- this this movie for me is very true to form it's just there's also a demonic hotel on top of it. Um, seeing like someone slowly s- spiraling back into old habits and then blaming the people around them. Mm-hmm. This this film, though, beats it over your head with it, is a good analogy for alcoholism. Because it actually does deal with some alcoholism, which is really weird for the 80s. You wouldn't have thought that a film that from that time period would have addressed the problems of alcoholism. But it does. It does. Hi, Tracing, by the way. Um, so, they, they do a good job. Um, that, that's a good popcorn emote. That, like, I didn't realize Twitch had their own popcorn emote. Hmm. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> um, but no, I, I, like, there's just, there's so much in this film to unpack and always just enjoy that I, uh, I don't know if I, we we could ever really like there's always going to be something that someone notices the next time they watch it Mm -hmm. is a good way to put this film okay you're never going to notice it all the first time the second time the third time the fourth time held the tenth time you're always going to notice something else like it took me watching like what culture to finally see that you know there's you know because there was the big theory that sarah kubrick uh did the uh moon landing hoax um and then all of a sudden, there's an Apollo 11 shirt in this film. People are like, he's confirming it! In reality, he's probably just fucking with people. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> um, he does that. It's Stanley fucking Kubrick. He fucks with people on set all the fucking time. That's his thing. So, like, it, it, it I never noticed that until I watched the What Culture video. And I was like, and the fact that, you know, there's this. And I'm like, wait, wait. The fuck? <laughs> So, you know, it's just... <laughs> this movie has a lot to unpack, and it in the best way possible. Mm-hmm. So. <clears throat> okay. Is there anything else you want to talk about here in The Shining before we move on? Um, One problem I have with some of the uh, cinematography is the some of the wide shots from Helicopter. Oh. Um, they do feel a little... Yeah, they they, they feel old. Um, especially given, especially you know, and when we get in Doctor Sleep, there's some similar shots, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have drones now, and they do a much better job of that <laughs> because they're 
they're very much a mm, yeah, they're tiny like and very tiny light and easy to control and they don't wave a lot so <laughs> yeah so yeah i get that i definitely understand that for sure but at least the big outside shots weren't very often it only happened maybe no no twice. they weren't but it, it, it's just one of those things that, like, if you if we if you watch enough film, which we've gotten to the point that we're coming up on two years of talking about films, it's going to be something that, like, we're just going to notice at this point. Like, mm -hmm. even me, who's not like trained to notice these things, are going to start noticing these things because fuck, we watch a film at least a film every week for the show. Um, so uh, it's just going to happen. I'm just going to notice it at this point. Mm -hmm. um, because I've, we've seen so many. So, and it, it doesn't take me out of the film. It's just something that, like, oh, right. They didn't have what we have today kind of moments. Yeah. So, not a bad thing. Just a, a noticeable thing. Yeah. I understand completely. Okay. In that case, Steph, I'm going to give you your 10 popcorn kernels. How many are you going to give the standing to? Nine. Nine. Which may be... Other than Aliens, might be the highest horror film that I've given a, a rating to. Have we done Aliens on this show? I don't... We did Alien. Sorry, Alien. Okay. <laughs> because we did Alien and Exorcist. Mm -hmm. I remember that week. That was a good week. That was a good week. <laughs> Two good horror films. Yeah. Yeah. I would actually give this movie myself a solid eight and a half. That's fair. Like, very good movie. Very good movie. I like it. I will always watch it if it comes on. Plus, it has one of my favorite theme songs ever. I forgot to mention that. Um, oh, dude, the music in this film is so good. It's just, as soon as you hear it, you're like, oh, shit's gonna go down. <laughs> like, fuck. Oh my god, it's so good. And like, I didn't actually know because I never really listened to it really closely. All the like, throughout the whole time house, like in the beginning at least, there's like, in the background and stuff. Like I knew there was always like the, like the pin prickly, like violin noise yeah. and plucking the strings, but I never heard the, the wailing, I guess is how you would call it. <laughs> Like the, 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 the like ominous the the ghosts almost yeah is a good way to put it mm -hmm. um, very good it's very good oh it's so good god <laughs> <laughs> right. so very very good right. with that being said let's uh excuse me become alcoholics and then talk about this movie like we're 30 years older ah right uh dr sleep yes um Holy shit! This film was like I I went in it having an expectation that it should be good, especially given that as of late we've had good Stephen King horror films with the It, it movies. Um, I mean, in between those, there was uh, the Dark Tower, um, which wasn't great. Mm -hmm. um, are you noticing something as well? Yeah, I'm trying to fix that. <laughs> Sorry, I just noticed it too. It's just, it's really weird. I've never noticed it. I, I would just uh, disable it and re-able it. That might work. Chasing, can you do me a favor and press uh, uh, F in chat for the the uh, browser chat box, <laughs> for, please? Yeah, for chat. <laughs> F, F in for chat. chat in chat. <laughs> F in chat for chat. <laughs> Um, but no, holy shit, this film starts out, and, like, it's got, I would say it's, uh, I wouldn't say it's a, it's what, what a modern Kubrick film would be, it's what someone who is influenced by Kubrick film would be, mm -hmm. which is kind of perfect for a literal sequel to the film. Um, it is a little jarring at the beginning, because, um... Instead of doing what everyone else is doing with uh, de aging, um, we get a recast Danny and uh, Wendy. Yeah. Um, 
And, uh, what's his name? Uh, the other guy. Uh, fuck. Uh, Dick. Um, all of them are, uh, recast. Um, and it, 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 it's a little jarring. I didn't watch these right back to back. I watched one on fr uh, Friday, one on Saturday, because uh, I didn't. I did, one. They're both two and a half hours of film, and I didn't want to have like five hours in one day of just watching movies. Oh yeah, uh, I understand. That would it's have been a long day. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, like, I had finished The Shining, and I had, like, an hour before the first showing for Dr. Uh, Sleep, and I was like, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> I'm okay watching it tomorrow. Because <laughs> these are two very hearty... There's there's not wasted time in either of these films. No. Um, and that's a good th that's the thing that I really appreciate about this film, especially, because it's, it's over two and a half hours. Barely. But it's over two and a half hours. Um... But it doesn't feel like it's two and a half hours, mm -hmm. which for me is a very important thing. If a film is long and feels long or is short and feels long, it immediately takes away my want to watch the film. Mm -hmm. Films that do this, we talked about it like two months ago with uh, uh, Batman v Superman when we finally watched the ultimate cut of that. Um, it was longer and it felt long. Mm -hmm. Um and it drags, and, it's, and that was one of our biggest problems with it. This film doesn't waste a moment. It really doesn't. <clears throat> like, at every point in time, it takes you from one moment to the next, and it does something better than Stanley Cube, uh, than The Shining, where it transitions from one passage to the next point in time better than the others. And, like, don't get me wrong, I was a little disappointed in the beginning where it had a time passage... After, like, it sets up, oh, this dramatic event is going to happen. And then years pass by and nothing's happened. I'm like, okay. That kind of, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but they, they, I think they do a good job of it um, with some of the stuff. Like, uh, the, like, they handle the fact that, like, they do the recasting works with what they do with it mm -hmm. uh, because they do add more to that story, like what happened after and stuff like that. Um, and again, you and McGregor, having just rewatched the prequels recently, um, God, he's such a great fucking actor. Even when like <laughs> he's one of the best parts of the prequels, and his part isn't even that great. I just love him as an actor because he does he gives Obi Wan is my favorite Jedi. Mm -hmm. But he is awful in the prequel series. The only redeeming point for him is literally Ewan McGregor. Because Ewan McGregor gives him something. Um, I don't know I don't know how to describe it because his character is still kind of shite mm -hmm. in those films. But it's Ewan McGregor, so like you love it. And he does such a great job of playing this complexly like hurt human being. He honestly does like my favorite like i honestly love how you could tell he's hurt he's traumatized and he's upset but then i also love how later on you can see how he changes and kind of progresses out of that as he's starting to trust others around him and himself a little bit more as well so like even mcgregor definitely one of the better parts of this movie i would definitely say um if i'm going to talk about other parts of this movie uh, let's talk about the other actors and uh, stuff in this film while I try to pull up the IMDb for it real fast. Uh, Kylina, Kylia, Curran, who plays Abra. My god, is she fucking awesome. She's pretty good. Like, she's only like 13, and she's acting like this? I can't wait to see her, like, in stuff down the road, too, when... Because this is all her character's already kind of complex because she's like Danny mm -hmm. from the shi like from the Shining in this, she, you know she shines. Um, I mean, that's not really a spoiler; it's in the trailer. Um, and like, there's a lot of complexity that comes with that, and she portrays all of it really, really, really well. Um, that like you, you can't. Th there's not a scene where I'm like, "That's a child actor." No, this is like she's a fucking actor um the entire film i can't there's not a moment where like 
I, I I feel like she doesn't act like well because of her age because she, she never doesn't not act well if that makes sense like she's always on top of her craft throughout the film in my opinion at least in my opinion yeah I thought she did very well through a good majority of the film I at times was kind of a little off put by like how do I explain it like um I guess there were moments when the tension was starting to build up that I, I guess I didn't really like her. Like, I don't know. Like, she did good. But I don't know if it was... Are you still there? Dev? Everybody else? I was disconnected. Yeah, stream's still there. ST stream. Dev. 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 Uh, hello. There we go. All right. That was. No, we're gone again. What's happening? This is the weirdest. Dis this is the weird weirdest Discord has ever been. Minus your cams. Um. Okay, we're still here. Okay, okay. Th that was weird. I've never seen that because we we didn't disconnect disconnect because we were st you were still on a call after that, right? Uh -huh. I was still on a call too. It was just pure black. That was weird. That was really weird. <laughs> <That's extreme. laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 probably no. just virus infected and pewter, you know, probably. <laughs> I just, I don't, that was weird. I've never seen Discord ever do that before. Anyways, that's fair. Um, cause she does, her character is, I, I don't want to say she's kind of, uh, she's not egotistical, but she's a little arrogant. I, I, um, I would say that, yes. But she's also 16. Yes. The character. Which, let's be honest, if you're 16 and have some rad-ass powers, you might be a little arrogant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's understandable. You might feel... and But she does the complexity of she also does feel like an outcast. Um, weirdly enough, she's she. I think her arrogance is a projection of the fact that she doesn't feel like she's able to connect to people. Okay, I can um, see that. Um, so, like, you know, I, I think it works for the character, and, and it does help because her character does grow from mistakes that her arrogance creates. Huh. Um, so, <laughs> I think that's also a good part of it. So, mm -hmm. I, I don't, I don't criticize her character for that. I think her character, uh, does gain from that. So, um... Also, who uh, a fucking scene stealer, uh, Rebecca Ferguson. Yes, Rebecca Ferguson. Rose the Hat was my favorite part of this movie. Like, oh I may have God. said that about Ewan McGregor, but she, hands down, was great. For the love of God, I loved every moment of her. Um, but that being said, she being my favorite thing doesn't like kind of also makes like brings up one of my least favorite parts about this film. And it's like, I'm not entirely sure it happened again. Dev. 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 Okay. Go ahead and force close Discord, Dev. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's see how this goes. I'm going to try that too. 
Let's see. <laughs> okay. Technical difficulties. His ghost controls. I'm normalizing some matrices. Make them normal. That's why the stream sucks. Sorry, you guys can't see it. Connecting. 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 Oh no, what's happened to Discord? Last week I get hacked by Cybernet. This week I'm getting visited by ghosts and ghouls. All of Discord is down. Hey, wait, I'm back. Is it is it back? I don't know. Was enough I, electricity I, I, pumped into it? I don't know, because I, I uh I just checked and I see people from like three minutes ago. Like on Twitter? What yeah, people Discord? like, yeah, people being like, Discord down, Discord down, Discord down. Like, I I search Discord and the first, like, the second thing that pops up, Discord down. Is it hashtag Discord down? Like, no, no, it's just Discord is down. Okay. Discord, like, I, it's just the word Discord down. Okay, I was just expecting like target down. There is like... there is a thing called is Discord down. It's an actual Twitter. If Discord ever goes down, DM me so I can alert. <laughs> That's what it says. <laughs> it's Discord down. And then what they do is all they ever do is reply yes or no. Is Discord down? <laughs> yes. Is Discord down? No. Is Discord down? Yes. It's just <laughs> He silent. He just sounds the alarm, being like, "Woo! Discord is down! Discord is down!" Um. Anyways. Okay. The uh. But my complaint was basically, like, I feel that the tension and the scares in this movie were kind of mixed on both sides. You know, like, there are some scary moments caused by the villains, and then there are scary moments caused by the heroes, and then like. I enjoyed them all the same, but then I was conflicted. Like, are the scary moment like the scary moments caused by the heroes aren't really as scary, even though some of the stuff they do is more gruesome and kind of traumatizing at the same time. But still, like, it wasn't as scary because it's like, yeah, get that person, hell yeah, you know. And it's like, I don't know, just I was kind of disappointed at times because it felt like the mood was a bit mixed to me. Like I wanted to be a little more helpless in a lot of the situations. And we have two of the sh brightest shiners that ever shined. So that's fair. Um, it's like a super, but they problem. also, the, it, it does have a little bit of a super man problem, but also it's a, their opponent knows how to deal with shiners that shine really bright. Um, she, she's essentially walking kryptonite for them. Um, in ways. In ways. Like, she, she knows, she, she had, she's dealt with them before, so she knows how to get around with, like, she knows the different types of people who shine. Mm -hmm. Uh, or, uh, or, uh, what is it? The, uh, the other term that they, they invent in this. Steam? Um, yeah, steam. They got a lot of steam. Um, which, Weird term, but it works. It makes sense for what happens, so... Yeah. Um, so, you know, it, it's... I, it may be a little bit of a superhero comp uh, Superman complex, but, again, just because 
the the Superman problem is there, but it doesn't mean it's a bad thing because you can still tell a very compelling story, and I think they do that. Right. Um, it, I I th- I think it is a not necessarily a problem of the film, but it is a um narrative like I don't want to say issue, but more of a like kind of a road bump that they do have to find a way around. Mm-hmm. Um, in certain points, so I think they do all right with that. Personally, I would say they do too. Overall, I definitely thought that the movie was very, like, it was well made. Of course, very well made, very amazingly acted, and the tension was up there for sure. It's just, like I said, just that one kind of like that's my one grievance, but it's still like my one big grievance. To me, I wanted it all to feel hopeless, and it because in The Shining, a lot felt kind of hopeless. It was all paranormal, and you can't deal with it because you don't know what you're doing. You're just a child. <laughs> but this movie was yeah, just, like it was scary. It was scary, and it was gruesome, and it was tense, and it's had some very amazing stuff. Like I love the pseudo flying scene for sure. That was one of my favorites. Holy shit! That that was straight out of a uh, Kubrick film. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that was that was one of those moments. I'm like, all right, I see, I see what you're doing here. You're paying homage to the, to the man. So, mm-hmm. well done. And it 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 does. You did good. You did good. Uh, <laughs> Mike, you, you did good. Mm-hmm. I. And even the homages to the, like, original shots, too. Like, the oh, God, yeah. shot remakes just at different time periods. Super good. Like, the one where it goes over the lake? Mm-hmm. Was just, like, oh, yeah, I remember this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Here we go. I'm just like... Oh, shit! Like, I was in the theater, sitting in my seat, you know. <laughs> it was one of the smaller uh, theaters that they have at the place that I went to. And I was on the inside, so I can't leave. And all of a sudden it happens, and just, like, my entire skin just crawled. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> That's right! <laughs> We're here! <laughs> like, I did quite the opposite, actually. Because as soon as that music started to play, because I was in one of the larger theaters, like, sadly, this movie didn't do overly what to, it didn't do amazing in the box office this weekend, but, um, it did okay, but mine was in one of the larger theaters. It was the ultimate Dolby Cinema Theater, you know, one of those, like, highest upgraded theaters that they have, and nice comfy seats, and reclined all the way back, and then the music starts playing, and I'm like, sit up, nice forward what's gonna happen <laughs> yeah. oh, that's also just because of the tension as soon as you hear that first note and you see that first shot uh, at, during that moment and it's towards the end of the film but it's still really good it's just like you're like you immediately like i sat up yes because it was just like your body no like especially if you especially if you grew up watching that film your body just knows that stuff is about to happen <laughs> And it happens. Um, also, I, I like some of the other stuff. There's an homage to another really popular web series um, in this movie. In, in this movie. Um, oh, are you talking about the uh, the Ruby? Yeah. Um, I, I saw it at least twice, but I don't know how many times it was in there. And there, it's in there a lot. And there's actually an entire scene that because the actress who plays Abra, um, Kalina. Kalia, Kalia, I think is how you say your name, Kalia. Um, she is actually a fan of Ruby. Um, so the fact that they're all under Warner Media uh, was—it <laughs> was one of those things where they're, she's like, <coughs> "Can we get some Ruby merch <laughs> for for the stuff?" And like, so like in her room, she has a couple Ruby posters and actually a statue of um, I think her name was Emerald. Emerald. Yeah. Yes. Um, <coughs> And it's, there's a bit of an homage to that character, and I'll get into that in the spoiler mm-hmm. section, but, like, they do a really cool job with that. I believe her name is Kylie. Kylie? Okay. Kylie Curran. Okay. 
GH throws me off because sometimes it's silent, sometimes it's not. Uh -huh. um, so, but like, it, it, like there, there's it's a lot of really cool stuff. Like this film is just good um, from a cinematic standpoint, from a music standpoint, from an acting standpoint. Um, I can't really think of anything that just glaringly stands out as being bad, except for the occasional kind of just plot convenience that happens. There's a um, that happens every once in a while. So, oh, yeah. like, honestly, the weakest point would be plot. <laughs> um, but at the same time, like, they also have power, so it can be explained away with that. Mm -hmm. um, which isn't everyone in this podcast favorite thing to use as a plot convenience, but it's there. Um, so, at least for my personal opinion, it's a worthy sequel. <laughs> oh, definitely. I would, out of lately, when it comes to, like, good first movies, bad second movies, I've, good second movie. Definitely a good second movie. I wouldn't say, I personally, once we get to ratings, I'll tell you my exact score, but I, I'm not sure it's quite as high as Shining for me. But it's pretty That's close. fair. I don't think it's, for me, I don't think I can rate it as high as The Shining just because The Shining is The Shining. Yeah. Um, like, <laughs> It's the Shining is on a different level, um, and it goes for a different kind of horror. While this one goes almost more for the sci-fi aspect of it, rather than the uh, like the straight up like um, paranormal aspect of it. I can, like I kind of see that. I definitely thought yeah. it was an interesting twist for sure because the the, the villains aren't they're not zombies, they're not vampires, they're not humans but like they're soul sucking leeches kind of yeah and it's really cool like it's not really explained what they are but their characteristics and their tendencies are all really cool and the other thing i will say this does like <laughs> with this and it it does feel like we could get a because stephen king's books do connect um here and there with through lines Getting a greater like Stephen King cinematic universe, I think, is possible, um, just based off of the fact that like they made a sequel <laughs> when he, he wrote the book for Doctor Sleep like three years ago, um, and The Shining came out like three years after um, the book came out, and they yeah, the, they made the adaptation of it, and they did, and you know he just they just did this about like the about the same time frame as in between books. The movies happen um which i think is one just awesome like that just that, that does help with the continuity of things so so that like you can use that as like this is connected to this film and if they want to they can through line and connect these together to other films like the it franchise or if they do if they do keep dark tower as canon, <laughs> they can connect it to dark tower because dark tower technically is the connection to all of them um so i i think I think it's interesting because the fact of the matter is, like, I know everyone wants a franchise. And the fact that, like, Stephen King has kind of already been a franchise writer mm -hmm. in his own way. <laughs> um, in his own way. It's definitely in his very unique own way. Yeah. Um, because, like... Some of it's I, pretty heavy-handed, so... Well, yes. Um, but, like, the fact that, like, someone was talking about Dreamcatcher... Um, which is another Stephen King book that was adapted into a film. They talk in that film about the fact that, like, in your brain, it's like filing cabinets, and that's how you hide stuff. That's how you move stuff around. And they teach, like, there's an alien that teach a, a boy who's an alien who teaches this group of three, how or three or four boys how to do this, okay. um, and how to move their their essentially mind palace. If you've watched Sherlock, how to do that, and that does carry over into this. So, like, there's a through line there. Um, it Like, it, it's very small through lines that e they're almost blink and you'll miss it. Which, another very popular and well-done franchise is how they started that. I get that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I, I'm essentially saying, like, if they do this as a franchise, I'm okay with it because they're not just shoving it in your face mm -hmm. as a franchise. It's more of a, like... So if you know, you know. I get you. 
So, just quick hypothetical question then. What do you think the next Stephen King movie would be if they're trying to make a franchise? Um, I know there's a f- actually a few planned for uh, the future. Give me a second. Stephen King I mean, movies. It's going to be a hypothetical question. Not a, I have the exact answer, but... Sorry, I I know there's I know there's some plan for next year. Um, uh, Salem's Lot is being planned, The Long Walk, and um, from Buick, um, which are all planned. They're they're to be announced dates and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd say the so. only the only. The, the only problem is not all of them are by the same company. Yeah. So it's, if it's not Warner Media, it's not going to be part of the uh, the franchise. Yeah, that's that's what I think is is the thing. So not necessarily a bad thing, but at the same time, it, you know, there's... <laughs> Will it be a full-fledged thing? Who knows? We'll, we'll, we'll find out. Mm-hmm. Um, so... My opinion, like it, it, if these do connect in some way, I think they're doing it in a way that it um it doesn't just like it doesn't just shove it down your face like other franchises have tried. Look yeah. at you, DC. Looking at you, uh, dark um, dark universe. Um, it's like that. I mean, that's what killed the dark universe in the first place. Was that their first film was a Ooh, look, we're connecting all together. The mommy. Oh, look, there's Jekyll and Hyde. Woo! Oh, they talked about the vampires. Woo! Yeah, it's like, um, let's talk about this person. Let's talk about that person. Let's talk about this person. Let's talk about. Oh yeah, we're dealing with the mummy right now. That's right. <laughs> That's that film in a nutshell. I haven't even watched it yet, and just like, I. I saw enough of it in the trailers to know how that film was, and people told me about it. I'm like, yeah, I, I knew it. I saw the film from the trailer. Um, this film isn't that, which is nice mm-hmm. as well. Y- if you saw the trailer, you don't really know how it's going to go. Um, and they do throw some pretty good curves at you. So good on them for that as well. Absolutely. Uh, because I, I uh, did see the trailer for this one, actually, and I thought my initial thought was it was going to be a little more different. Like, I thought it was, uh, let me rephrase that. I thought it was going to be a lot different than what we got because I was expecting something that was a little more action heavy and a lot more like, like not thrilling, but exciting almost like action exciting. Like, oh my goodness, they're running from the snake. Let's go. Bullets are flying. Explosions. Like I was expecting that kind of thing. And thankfully it wasn't that at all. It like, and that's just, that's what, that's why I don't watch trailers anymore. Every time I do, I'm misled. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that's why I'm okay. For me, that's why I like watching trailers it, because I like being mes- misled in a sense because, like, if a trailer can do enough to make me kind of get a feel for the film without revealing too much, but also reveal enough that I'm going to be interested um, and even kind of, throw, like, from just the trailer, throw some curves at me. Um, my best example is when with the Infinity uh war trailers where i was guessing certain things and right on certain on on a lot of degrees but it was it was i was right um moments like i didn't actually expect to be right um i was more just kind of like flexing like yeah you know just based off of this i think and then i was right i'm like oh shit i'm right this is really bad for what's where this film's gonna go now um (laughs) I, i regret being right um that's why you don't make but, those guesses and theories. <laughs> because they, then they come through and the half the universe dies uh, um but like this film like it kept you on your toes which i appreciate um keep me on your on toes uh i'm gonna throw some popcorn at you ah uh, popcorns at me with with these said popcorns I, i'm conflicted i'm very conflicted because like I wouldn't necessarily call it an eight, but it's not a seven and a half, but we round up. So I guess I'm going to give it an eight. That's fair. <laughs> um, I was also going to give it an eight. Um, it's again, it's no shining, but it's a, uh, it's a worthy successor. Absolutely is. Definitely is. My, like, I love everything about this movie, except for the one little bit of mode 
tension bits. Which we can explain in spoilers right now as we go and press buttons. Let's get ready to spoiler! Yay! Speaking of that, I did watch the Logan Paul fight, and he's there, and, <laughs> like, as he said it, let's get ready to rumble, and I was like, let's get ready to dumbo, in my head, because of that stupid fucking film. Can you believe that was this year? Like, early this year that we watched that? That actually reminds, like, you mentioned that we were getting close to our two years. I need to remember what our first episode was. So we can celebrate our 100th episode if we haven't, if we, I know we haven't passed it yet, but it's coming up oh, soon. We're getting there. Yeah, we yeah. are getting there, aren't we? Yeah. Uh, you're, you're just gonna, are you just gonna count through the archive <laughs> and gonna... then up until YouTube and then count back from YouTube and then count back from there? <laughs> it, it's basically gonna be, let's see, I, we talked about, I'm gonna go from the very first episode that I have and hope at one point we reference how many weeks we've been doing it. <laughs> well, see, you just count how many episodes we have. And that way... Um, because we've only missed... Let's be honest. We've only missed, I, I think, two shows. I don't have all the recordings, though, remember? Like, some in the early days we lost. I, I send them to you. No, like, some of them were, like, ones that I never downloaded or, like, ones that got corrupted over time because my hard drive sucks. Like, um, yeah, I've told you about this before. Right. I still have a good majority of them. Just I lost like every like, like I lost maybe like four or five. Okay, so rough ball in it, we could say maybe like middle of January, late January. It would be late January or almost on the dot. It was about. I think uh, it it may. Um, I, it would be early February, if not like on our anniversary of the show. Mm-hmm. So. Because of like missed, we've only missed about two shows, if I remember correctly. I think we've we've like every week, even if one of us couldn't make it, we've still had a show pretty much. Mm-hmm. So, because I can only think of a couple weeks where something happened and we weren't able to have a show. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it, I think it's only been two shows that we missed. So we'll figure it out. It would it would literally be <laughs> it would literally be the week of our anniversary for the show. If that's the case. If that's the case. We'd have to... Well, I'm no, 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 no. It would be two weeks before. It would be two weeks before. Because it was. It would be 104 mm-hmm. on the next anniversary. Yeah, so, technically two shows before then. And that's also if we don't take any weeks off this, like, in between. I mean, we're already planning to take off Christmas. That's one week there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know if we've confirmed that yet, but it's... We're we're it, it it's it's up to us. Yeah. Sorry, we're figuring <laughs> it out. So, <laughs> yeah, it kind of just depends on do we do, do are we gonna have time? The, the the thing is, Christmas also falls in the middle of the week this year, so it's just kind of weird. Um, anyway, spoilers for Doctor Sleep. Um, holy shit. <laughs> uh, that. <laughs> what, if, I'll go into the Ruby thing if you want. Sure, Me too. Let's start with kind of explain that. Um, so the reason why, so like, it's a little bit of callback to em- uh, Emerald's power, which is the power to create illusion. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Abra creates some illusions where she changes the room and changes what is being perceived as actually happening in the room mm-hmm. when Rose the Hat gets in there, <coughs> so that Rose doesn't know what's happening. Um, and then all of a sudden the thing happens with the hand and holy shit. Um, and then Abra's sitting at the edge of the bed, actually awake. Um, but, and, and with no eyes, yeah, no eyes with Emerald's hair. Yes. That's the cool thing. Like that's, that's the big call right there is that like, she's, she's, she's doing some tricks for her favorite web, web series, which is fucking cool. Um, because I'm a fan of Ruby. I'm watching the new season. I haven't um, started yet, but I will soon. I like to let it build up a little bit, and then I binge. Uh, that's, that's a good way to do it. Um, so I was like, ah, that's a good call right there. That was cool. Like I got it, and I, I was like, a lot of these people aren't going to get why she looked that way. I do, though. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, that, that was cool. Um, 
I both liked it and simultaneously didn't like it, you know? Because it was really cool, and it was super interesting that they did it, and it was like, hey, fan cult, online internet culture, you'll actually have something you like in a movie. Like, it's it's definitely fan service, 100%. But at the same time, the CG in that moment, and it's like the only case of bad-looking CG. I agree. <laughs> but I, I my excuse for it is it is also... It's, a dream sequence? Yeah, which, yeah, of course. It makes sense. Like, it's supposed to be freaky, so I guess they kind of intentionally made it look bad. I guess, maybe, but... So, like, it works, but... It's like it's a it's, little uncanny. Yeah, it, yeah. And it was cool. And that was actually one of the moments, too, where I was thinking that, that like, the mood was a little off for me. Because... In that moment, I'm more worried and terrified for Rose because what Rose was stuck in was freaking creepy. Oh, yeah. But, like, that's not the point of this movie. The point of this movie is to be worried for Abra. And I'm at no point ever really worried for Abra. That's true. I can't argue with that because Abra's always kind of got a handle on things. Mm -hmm. Um,. Because she also never really repressed her power. She's just kind of slowly been, like, building building her tools and, as she's gone. True. And now it's just kind of weird to me because The Shining is a little bit whatever you want it to be. I know it's telekinesis, and but it's also, like... I could take over your body stuff now, which was cool, Uh I People could, have different power sets. Yeah, there's there's different power sets in The Shining. But, like, it also feels like for Abra, it could be whatever she really wanted. Like, she could project herself somewhere else. She could track somebody down. She well, could... her ability to do that is because she's a looker, as they call it. Um, so she's able to put herself somewhere else um, without mo leaving where she is. Um, she's essentially able to do astral projection. Mm -hmm. um, if you know the X-Men, you know what that is. Um, so she's able to kind of just project herself to where she needs to be. Um, and that's kind of her ability. But she also has the ability of not... It, she's not a pusher, because there's a term for that. There, that's the ability to kind of, like, push people to do stuff. Yeah. But she also teaches Danny <laughs> how to essentially push into people. Um, and do mind stuff. Um, because Danny had repressed his ability for so long. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's it's interesting, because, like, it's... It, it's definitely probably the biggest flaw of the film, but at the same time, I think everything else is so strong that it doesn't minimize the film. Um, where in, like, other films, it wouldn't be as that big of a deal. Like, again, like, compared to another Warner Brothers film, Batman v Superman... That film, from start to finish, shouldn't have happened the way it did because Superman's fucking Superman. Mm -hmm. um, there's ten hundred ways he could have solved those issues, and they never happen. Um, the uh, in this film, because we also don't know these characters super well yet, we 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 have the excuse of not knowing them that they that they get into these situations. It's it's definitely not the strongest. Um, a thing for the film but it's definitely not the weakest either yeah. so yeah. well i i mean it's the weakest but it's not the weakest it could be for the, the film could you since you seem to have paid more attention than i did in this movie um what what was the crow's power um tracking okay so he was that's why he's a, a crow like um no 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 different like, kind of tracking. yeah because like um because there was Oh, He's Rose to... has her ability of tracking. Then there's Abra's ability of tracking. Now there's Ooh. Crow's unseen third ability of tracking, where he can smell the scent of their powers. Yes, he's kind of more of a. Again, he's a crow. He's a hunt. He's he's a hunter. I would think he's a, a wolf. Then in that case, not a crow. If like because he says I'll smell them, like I'll follow their scents, and it's like sure you can follow them via your smell, sure, but that doesn't make sense. Crow sounds cooler. Crow Daddy sounds cool. Um, the first time I heard it, I thought she said Craw Daddy, and I'm like, what? <laughs> He's a um, pinchy man. Pinch, pinch, pinch. <laughs> um, 
but it's more that he's a, he's a hunt. Like he's you know, crows are used for you know. Aren't crows scavengers? Yeah, so he's a scavenger. He they're, is. I mean, they're it, all technically scavengers. Yeah. Right now, but... but he's like he's the he's the one who finds the the food source. Um, Unless Rose uh, does it. Well, Rose is. I don't know what, like, her power's never really fully defined. I think she's got a few powers due to the fact <laughs> that she's been around for a while and she's ate so many goddamn souls. Um, then show me a movie about Grandpa, then. <laughs> dude, right? Shit, finding out that he was, you know, he he's watched empires literally build and fall. Yeah, um, like... I, from, I, from Rome to now. Yeah, I was like, he was like an ancient Egyptian and a Roman and, like... Ooh. <laughs> there's a lot of story there um but uh the, the the trackings that you see there they are different um abra's tracking is that she she's able to look into people she has a she can she connects with um i think because I, they're in the same state um danny and abra end up connecting just based off of like proximity um, they just resonated with each other somehow. Yeah, they're, they're, they're it weird powers. Um, it could be whatever you want it to be. Yes, plot but convenience. like to, pretty much. Um, <laughs> it is. It's a plot convenience. They live in the same state. Whatever. Um, the uh, with uh, her power to if she tracks someone, it's just she's got to have something that like she's able to. Um, essentially get their energy and like find them and look in on them um crow is i i i essentially find the uh the the body through following the scent that it leaves um so which which is something a bird would do hey you know it, it, there's the carcass the scent goes up into the the air streams um, and it does get a little dissipated as he goes through, so you gotta really, like, that's why he circles around where the, 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 the meat is. Um, because he's circling and that's kind of what he, we see him do that with one of the people they kill. Um, and then, uh, sirens are, are me, I'm sorry, people. Um, I live by a busy street. Um, the, uh, last thing um with rose's ability i think it's that she's able to um project into minds so <laughs> she's if she if she finds a way to connect to them she can go and track them that way um and use what they've seen and stuff like that as something that they that she feels that's why she meditates she's able to essentially go into other people's minds um and read them so, um, Abra's just like a D&D &D cleric where it's like um, where she uses the spells um, find person and find object and <laughs> yeah kinda um, yeah she'll just find you and also the fact that like she also has the ability like if there's a let's say there's another um, uh, shiner um, and something happens to them she she has the ability to kind of look into what's happening because she feels that essentially across like funny enough you mcgregor's in this but it's almost like the force um because she she gets a feeling through the shining um that something's happening and she she's able to see into those moments um as painful as they may be mm -hmm. um so they're different enough that i can discern them but i will say having three different things that do similar things eh, um not necessarily needed um it's like it all really matters on how much you believe in your shining abilities and how well your shine your powers come through she's well young, and the other thing so she always believes in herself <laughs> well the other thing too is like because of what happens to crow daddy um they wouldn't be able to like the the stuff with Rose at the end in the uh, the Overlook wouldn't have been able to happen um, if she didn't have some way to track them down as well. Um, so you know, again, they do the bait trick and lead them there. Um, I will say, because of what happens at the Overlook, I appreciate them doing the recast. 
The recast also kind of... Like, I liked it. But I'm not... Like, I don't know if I would have preferred the de-aging. Or, like, a recasting CGI face. Or, like... I don't know. It was all kept pretty minimal budget. A lot of it was kept live action. And, like, not CGI. So, it's pretty hard to say if I would have been easy to notice something like that or not. But... I... I don't know if I liked... It, to me, I didn't like it as much, only because I could tell more that it wasn't her. Like, um, and same with him. It wasn't him. It wasn't Danny, and it wasn't Wendy. It was close. Well, was I will close, say, but... the thing is, it would have been a little bit Tarkin-esque if we had done the de-aging. Um, I mean, and, and the, the, the technology is fucking phenomenal. Right now, mm-hmm. let's be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, seeing Sam ja- like Samuel L. Jackson be de-aged in Captain Marvel is one of the fucking coolest things ever because you're like, you actually do genuinely look younger, Samuel mm-hmm. L. Jackson. You genuinely do, and it's kind of fucking awesome. Yeah. Um, <coughs> because the problem would have been that like, one a fun fact: uh, the the actor who plays uh, Danny um, in the uh, Shining does make an appearance as a, uh, um, as just a random, uh, like, person watching, uh, I think the baseball game. Um, found that out through, uh, looking at his IMDb. Um. Fun. Yes, yeah, it's, it's kind of cool. Like, it's one of those things like, ah, I see what they did there. Um, but there's too many long scenes that, like, because... <laughs> The longer that's the, the de aging is in your face, the easier it is to tell that it's fake. That um, depends. Like depending. That depends. Um, like I'm not gonna say generally that overarch like every single time you see stare at some CG face, the faker it's gonna look. That's not true. But it's I'll say generally sure, but not always. I would say with the case of because I mean we're on the spoiler. If they had done it with Jack Nicholson, it would have been very noticeable. I mean, with the guy that we got, I didn't... He he didn't quite have the Jack Nicholson flair, you know? Like, uh, that was lacking to me. It was close, and I, I don't know. And it just kind of bugged me because they didn't show him face forward. They always showed him... Like, they did a little bit of the forward front, but it was most of the time a direct profile so it was like he doesn't quite match so we have to hide it as best we can and it's like that distracted me i guess and i didn't like it that's fair and i think i think again if there was anything else you can tr- critique about the film it's this just because the shining so etched into people's minds that changing who they are a little bit does get no- is noticeable um because like th- there's four characters who are recast there's jack wendy danny and dick who are all recast from The Shining into their uh, Doctor Sleep versions. Um, and again, it, it's noticeable in some places, but also at the same time, like Alex uh, Esso, Esseo, um, who plays Wendy, she does a really good job of acting as, like, uh, 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 making it come off to how Shelley Duvall acted as Wendy. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, who plays young Danny? Uh, uh Roger Dale Ford um does a good job of making it feel like similar enough to who uh um Danny was in that film to you know be uh to to, to be that character I guess is the best way to put it like he 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 fits that character well enough um that profile I guess um and I and honestly uh um, where is he? Uh, shit. Uh, Carl uh, Lumbly does a fantastic job as Dick. Oh, like, yeah, as Dick Halloran. Oh my god, he's so fucking great. Um, because every time he's in the scene, I'm like, you're fucking rocking the scene. Like, you, you steal the scene. And then, like, that scene where it's him and you and acting together, and it's just like, there's there's such good acting in that scene, especially that there's a there's a lot of emotion in that scene that isn't said, it's acted and it's good. Um, like it, the best way is put it that like it's said in like how 
how they speak, like the way that their their voice is, yeah, the um, way they're, and the, yeah, they're just genuine with their conversations with each other. Yes, um, and again, I it it would have been I think it would have been shocking to see a de-aged Jack Nicholson. Yeah, probably sure. It doesn't that's, have to that's... be a de-aged Jack Nicholson. It could just be a person who they put a CGI Jack Nicholson face over. True. <laughs> um, but you in know, that case, we do it? get... We, at that, well, I mean, apparently no one uses that technology for this stuff anyways, for film. Um, the, the only problem with that is then we do get the Tarkin effect, where it is... It's so close to real mm-hmm. that it does bother you a little bit. Like, um, with Tarkin, he's the only thing that I don't like with him is he looks a little bit plasticky. Yes. And if they just had a little bit more time to work on him, he would be fine. Um, well, I think the problem with it is that it it like we're we're just we're, 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 this year is the year that we finally hit the hyper realistic. Like, um, with again, we, we talked about last <laughs> yeah, week, but yeah, the, we've this had time. this discussion before. Like, we've just gotten to the point when CG is now able to handle really good looking human faces. And I understand yes. what Uncanny Valley is, but like, I know, I know you do. I'm yeah, just more iterating for, for chat just, stuff. I, it's just, I don't. We bring this up a lot now where CG happens to be like the most important part of the film and we talk about it a lot. And yeah. I personally don't enjoy these conversations only because it's like, oh, what'd you think about this? Oh, well, it was computer generated so they could do whatever they want and they didn't generate it properly. So, like... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a good breakdown of how those conversations could go. Uh... <laughs> Fair enough. Um, yeah, I, I just, I don't know. I appreciate that they, they wanted to make sure that, like, for the continuity of the film itself, mm-hmm. um, that it didn't, uh, break that, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, which makes it okay to me. Um, it still is jarring in some scenes, especially, like, the first time you notice it's not actually straight from The Shining is the scene where you hear the... <laughs> Which, it's right at the beginning, and it, it's, as soon as, the movie starts with this, which was one of those things that my brain was like, oh shit, because I just watched this yesterday. <gasps> starts with a... Oh yeah, him writing on the... <laughs> I'm just like... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I definitely enjoyed that. One, uh, one thing that I thought, like... That I that, uh, the boy, I could tell that it wasn't the original shot just because of how he was pedaling. It looked like it was so much more effort for him than it was the original Danny to ride on those bikes. That's fair. I didn't notice it. I noticed it when they did a turn, and his head was just far enough, and his nose is just is just barely long enough to notice that it's not Danny. I'm like, they recast him. <laughs> <laughs> or they forgot to do the CGI here. Yeah. Um, was my first thought, and then, and then like after that, you get her to Wendy, and yeah, you you see everyone else. I'm like, ah, oh, I see what you did. I see, I see. Um, so I think it for budgetary reasons and for uh, like I guess an acting reason. Um, because like. We'll we'll get into this more in the news topics. I feel I feel, um, but using someone else's face on someone else's face does that really mean that that actor is acting at that point? Um, is is the true thing there? Um, so I don't know. It, it like I I know why it bothers people is yeah, the best way to put it. And I know it's probably the second other the, the other thing you can critique for this film. Okay. Oh, I do have one other question actually. Yes. Uh, did you like their use of the shower lady? Because I like don't, I don't feel it was overused. I agree. She was the most used character other than like our main characters. And 
I was like, isn't there so much more you could use? Like, what about the man in the pig mask in, from the Shining? Uh, or... <laughs> I would say he's more in a... Uh... A borf. Yes, a borf outfit. <laughs> I was like, hey, it's Borf. <laughs> I forgot how that costume looked. It's Borf from Spaceballs. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> it was definitely... <laughs> doing you? Yeah, it was definitely a very tusky Borf. And, like, why couldn't he be in this movie a little bit? Or any of the... Or more of the guy with the giant hole in the top of his head with blood streaming down his face. Lloyd. Um, or the twins. Yeah. Come play with us. <laughs> Forever and ever and ever. I also exciting. don't feel like the payoff of the hotel was as earned as they tried to make it. Uh, yeah, like, I liked what happened. Like, it was kind of cool to see all of the ghosty ghoul people turn on uh, on the, the, the on Rose. But then what happens afterwards, I don't want to spoil it too much if I can avoid it. Yeah. But, like... I was very disappointed by it. I was like, this just feels like you needed to add more tension to the end of this film. Yeah. Yeah, it feels very added on. Mm -hmm. um, and not in the most graceful of ways. So, And then, and the only reason why it's kind of okay is because at the end, he's okay. And, we, and we're told he's okay. But it's only okay because they establish people with The Shining can still talk to others. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like... I mean, I guess if you could say... Ah, oh, fuck it, I'm just... I mean, we're at the spoiler section. I mean, I guess you could say dying in the one place that traumatized you and burning it to the ground is retribution and making it okay. But, like, it just... I, I don't know. I didn't feel like that was the happy ending that we were hoping for. And I guess it's not supposed to be a happy ending by any means. But was it the satisfying ending? Yes. But no. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Parts. <laughs> In ways. <laughs> but not enough ways, maybe. It, it's it's complicated. But I I would honestly say, if you do like The Shining, go see this. Mm -hmm. Without a doubt. Definitely. Definitely wow. see this if you can. Any others? Any other last-minute spoilery things? Anything from the uh, chat out there who wants to ask us any questions about the movie, spoiler-wise? Oh, I wish we would have saw more flies. I know. We only really saw It's a really once. weird throwaway line. It's a really weird throwaway line towards the end of the film with the flies, and we see it once, and I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. Like, I feel like it was something that was more in-depth in the book, but just wasn't really explained in the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was definitely because that was some of the stuff we dealt with within uh, it, uh, chapter two too, um, that we had to deal with. So I think that that's that's one of those few moments where like there are certain things that like are in the film to be in the film. There, there just need to be more flies explaining that. Like, e it, like even in his uh, um, his job, if we just saw a couple flies here and there, noticeably there, would help. Yeah, like just yeah, because he says he sees death flies. So you would think that if he was around people who were dying, he would see them on their face while they were dying, and not the cat be just laying on their bed. Which, mind you, that cat is fucking adorable. Oh like, god, yeah. If I'm gonna die, that cat better walk on my my bed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm okay with no one if that cat's there. I'm like, you know what? It's time. <laughs> <laughs> um scene that creeped you out the most um good question i it's got to <sighs> i've got two in my mind one was for... go ahead you first go ahead go ahead i was about to say the first one for me was the ruby mind trap yes that's definitely on my list <laughs> and then the second one for me is baseball boy Oh, no, that's pretty good. I don't want necessarily call it creepy, but it was one of those scenes that my brain played around with was when um, Grandpa died. Um, How they all the scattered and then jumped on him as he died. Oh, like, no, that, was, that, that was one of those things where I'm like, oh, man, you guys, you guys are hungry. 
Yeah, um, like the they were other just part hanging over him, and then they just ate his souls. The other part that I thought about though is if they ever got stuck in that um, cycling mode, they're droggers. <laughs> they look like droggers when they're dying. A little bit. <laughs> Especially, it. especially Grandpa Flick. Yeah, I was like, dude, you're straight up a drogger. This is how that started. <laughs> I'm going to go play Skyrim. <laughs> um, I just went and watched Ready Player One. And then was like, man, I wish I had half these video games. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I, I also wouldn't necessarily say this film is trying to be extremely creepy it's more of a tension film it's a suspenseful thriller kind of thing yeah which is right up my ballpark so it's definitely not a psychological thriller no but it's a it's a uh psycho t- uh, t- uh kinetic thriller sure <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you have that one, sure. Thanks. <laughs> I worked hard on it. Okay. So, anything else before we head into the news? No, no. I think I think we're good on that. All right. It's news time. News time. Yeah, it's time for the weather. Can, can I start out with one? Sure. Uh, guess what launches tomorrow? What launches tomorrow? Is it Disney Plus? Yep. I'm excited. Same. Uh, I'll probably be setting up a uh, a work one. I so. get one year for free for being a Verizon customer. Wait, we get one year free? As a, yeah. As a Verizon customer, depending on your contract, you get one full year at Disney Plus for free. Mm-hmm. Did you not get a text about it? Because no. I did. Hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to someone real quick. Yeah, you go that. talk to your uh, your dad who pays your cell phone bill. I pay my own cell phone bill. I'm just on his plan, fucker. <laughs> There's a difference. I do pay for my portion of it. It's just that, you know, I'm on a plan because it's cheaper. <laughs> no, I understand. I do the same thing. I just felt like calling Bitch. it out. <laughs> I know you do the same thing, you little shit. Um, I'm looking forward to see how the Mandalorian is because it's the first live action series for, Mar- or for uh, Star Wars. So hopefully it's good. Um, at least, uh, I, I'm gonna put all my hope that it's good. I'm just kind of hoping for like my big hope with Disney Plus is that they experiment more with tones and moods with the superheroes because Marvel superheroes kind of all have the same general feeling to me, at least, where it's just like lows and then highs, but by the end of the trip. Uh, by the end of the movie, you all, you're like, you're excited and you're energized, but you're like, I could go for something a little more sustaining, you know? <laughs> At least that's just me. So I kind of hope that... I, I'll I'll, uh, I'll hold my uh, breath uh, yeah. on this one yeah, uh, for ahead. once. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it all really depends. Like, don't get me wrong. Like... Like I've always, like I keep saying, Marvel movies aren't bad movies. They're okay movies. They're definitely fine. But they're kind of the same to me overall. Keep digging, and I may have to speak. You know this. Stop crying. <laughs> I'm not doing it. I'm All just, right. I'm just waiting for the the blood from you biting your tongue to come streaming out of your mouth. <laughs> Fuck you, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am interested to see what other stuff they because they they're also putting pretty much the entire Disney vault is gonna be on there. Mm-hmm. Like all old shows and everything is pretty much on there. Like. You can go back and watch fucking Goof Troop for fuck's sake. That like, makes me wonder, like, how does. So how does digital streaming work with copyrights? Because the copyright is life of an artist plus 75 years. And then you have to, like, keep releasing, depending on contracts, you have to, like, keep releasing movies to try and maintain the rights, depending on what you signed over. But, like... The rules have been bent a lot um, the, because of just capitalism that's just the way to put it uh capitalism has definitely changed that people want to hold the rights or stuff mickey is not a public domain due to the fact of just capitalism it's that's the thing they're they're they, they've invested enough money to change the way rules are 
done for that kind of stuff to hang on to the rights to use that and no one else can use the Mickey Mouse um, domain. Uh, because at some point, it should have become a public domain and people could have made Mickey Mouse stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, it's 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 just what it is. Um, <clears throat> we'll see how it goes um, with that, too, because they, they own a lot. Um, speaking of streaming stuff, did you look into uh, HBO Max at all? No, I did not. But I was interested. What is HBO Max? I'm confused because I've joined the club. (laughs) Like because you people already have to pay to get HBO. They already have HBO Go. They already have their own HBO website where you can watch their videos. So what are you getting when you pay for HBO Max? Okay, so apparently HBO Max. If you have Go, I think is the one that's not because now is the one where you have to have a. Cable provider, right? Yes. I think and like Go it. is the the just okay. And Go is the other one yeah. that's like, like like the Netflix version. Yeah. If you have Go, I think you get Max for the first year. Okay. Um. Max is gonna have um. A lot of early at like early. Access to stuff that like, the DC shows, some Rooster Teeth content, like the for the first like. The second season of Genlock is going to be on HBO Max for 90 days before it gets to the RT first. Which, for me, is just fucking weird. That's impressive. Think about it. Like, they actually made a property that was consumable to mass media. Well, I mean, it was on Adult Swim. Um, so, same with, like, I think Rick and Morty, same thing. Um... The season after this will be on HBO Max before it's on Adult Swim. Yeah, um, but still, like, I'm gonna. It, it's complicated. It, it's it. The best way to put it is that if you have Go, you have Max for a year, and then they're like Max will have exclusive shows and stuff like that, which is what they'll want you to convert to. Um, Go, I think, will be like the lower tier option. I guess, where it's just, you're just streaming their cable shows, I guess. So if you just want to watch, like, Watchmen, Westworld, stuff like that, I think that's what Go is. It's, like, a basic package, while Max has exclusive content. That's the best way I can figure it out. (laughs) Um, Oh, okay. So, it's also, I I said, what will HBO Max include? Uh, Everything from HBO, um... If it is aired or will be aired on an HBO television TV channel, it will be on HBO Max. Yes. Uh, it'll, uh, you will also have access to some of Warner Media suite, uh, Warner's suite of cable channels, including TBS, TNT, CNN, True TV, and Cartoon Network. Yes. Um, and also, there's a deal with like uh, Sesame Street as well. There, like you got with HBO Max, you get early access to these like season of Sesame Street. Which seems really weird that, like, that that's the case, that, like, Sesame Street is almost behind a paywall right now, um, in a way. But at the same time, they probably invested a lot into PBS, and PBS was like, okay, we'll do it. Because, um, it, like, donate to PBS and this shit doesn't happen. Um, but it's happening. So it's it's a really weird process, and also the fact that they've been buying a lot of their stuff back, so that they can uh, air it on there. Um, so it's 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 interesting, and it's gonna be weird. It's also gonna be like fifteen dollars, um, which for me is a little high um, for a streaming service because. I can just invest that elsewhere. I mean, um, switch, like HBO Max, directly compares compare it to Disney Plus, where you get all Disney, all Marvel, and you're getting Hulu with ads, and that's twelve dollars a month. Like that's three dollars less, and you're getting, I'd probably say, approximately the same amount of stuff, just not made by HBO. Well, and the thing is, you're getting—you're not just getting Marvel, Star Wars, Disney. You're getting National Geographic. You're getting a lot of the Fox um, yeah. shows as well. Um, so at some point, you'll probably also get FX. 
um, through their streaming service. Um, but you, you also have access to FX too, because isn't FX stuff on Hulu? Uh, um, yes, I think so. It's like Archer and Sunny is on there, I think. Um, it's like you're getting access to that kind of stuff. So like Disney's already got to shake things up with uh, Plus. Netflix is trying to keep up. I don't know if Netflix is going to keep up. I'll be honest. It's the OG, but like Disney has a lot on them right now, just based off of what the what they're throwing out into the thing. Like they, Disney originally wasn't gonna have Endgame on Disney Plus until December, but they did some fucking trickery, and it's gonna be on their day one, which is crazy. That's nuts. I've I've been reading into Netflix a little bit lately because like people who watched the beginning of the podcast know that I was very iffy about Netflix. But lately, I've been kind of more lenient with them because they've been making some pretty good stuff. A lot of stuff on Netflix yeah. has is pretty good. But a lot of economists are lately thinking, like, Netflix is going down the drain, and they don't know how it's possible for Netflix with their current business model to not be a failing business. Like, they've paved the way for online streaming, but at the same time, they're, like, not really making money anymore. And they're spending it on a bunch of different original programs, but they're not like bringing in more income. They're only just sustaining and maintaining. At some point, their spending to bring in better, more content is gonna overlast their how much they're making. And well, the other problem too is that some of the shows that people are watching are getting killed off, and maybe because they're not making enough for the budget itself. But like, maybe that's why that person stayed with Netflix. Oh, you're you're getting rid of this well why am i here then um i don't know it, it's just it's it's got to be interesting we are in the streaming wars this this tomorrow marks day one of the stream day of the streaming wars um we've had like the preludes to it with hulu netflix verve like there was the whispers of the war and this this is the archduke ferdinand day this is when it starts. Mm-hmm. We've got a new competitor. He is at. It's the rage in the cage. It's. I'm trying to think of the <laughs> WWE. Um, what's the one where they have like 20 people in the ring and they have to throw them over the oh, top God. and eliminate them? Fuck. Yeah, <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Uh, uh, oh man. And like slowly, people keep entering the ring as it goes on. Yeah. Which. <laughs> really messes with people who's been in there longer Mm -hmm. um so um i I don't remember what it is but i mean kind of like it 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 might be like that because like i mean let's be honest um services like dc universe and stuff like that are probably going to (laughs) cease like i see dc universe joining the the hbo uh uh access um Mm -hmm. we'll have the uh We'll have Hulu maybe coincided with um, Royal Rumble. Rumble. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll, it, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be. It, this is going to shake up the medium at this point. Mm-hmm. I mean, hey, Pete, I love how nowadays, like. There, I remember when I was a door-to-door salesman, people used to complain to me, why can't I just buy the channels I want to watch and pay for those? Now it's an option, and all I'm hearing is, God, I hate having to pay for four or five different streaming services to watch all of my TV shows. It's like, we're never satisfied. <laughs> well, the other thing is, too, you got to do it in cycles if you want to save the big dollar. Um whenever the show you really want is coming out on Netflix, start buying the Netflix. Get rid of the HBO. Um, Disney will probably always be on your budget. Uh, it's going to do that. It's going to have... It, once it's in your wallet, you're not going to get rid of it. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, that's just that's just how it's going to be, bro. Mm-hmm. You're, you're done. Uh, especially given that, like, they're... They're, they're, they're going to have family plan. Like, they're not, not just a regular... Like, cause the other thing too, Netflix and HBO, I think HBO Max aren't gonna allow for like sharing it, like like the other ones do. 
I think it might do the uh, IP address thing. Uh, I know Netflix is going to start doing it, which, let's be honest, that's going to hurt Netflix. Not being able to share, like, the same account with people is going to hurt it because, like, why am I going to pay for the four screens if the four people that use it aren't going to be able to use it because they're in different states? Mm -hmm. There's no point in paying for this. I'm just going to go down to the two screen option um, or the one screen option. Um, if there is that, I don't know. I, I don't, I have, I'm not, I don't pay for the Netflix account, obviously. Um, well, I mean, everyone had to pay more for their Netflix account just so they could allow multiple IP addresses. So, yeah, which kind of lame. Um, <laughs> I mean, makes sense because it's a business, but also kind of lame. Is it worth the, the $4 per, per person who keeps it? For the potential twelve dollar loss for the people who get rid of it, it could be. Yeah, I mean, think about this. A lot of people don't even watch the Netflix anymore. They have people who are just lurking, like it's there, and they just have it on automatic payments each and every month. And those are the ones that they're trying to mainly keep, which is fine. But like, if they can get what's happening now is like people like you and me who don't pay for our own Netflix accounts. We've been p mooching off of our parents. I'm going to say this mooching essentially um because um and getting our netflix for free but if we paid for the service like a user should they'd be getting an extra 12 dollars. so they're ultimately they're saving people eight dollars because we don't have making it so we don't have to buy our own by allowing a at least a tier up upgrade so it's like true. overall it's like they're still trying to make money because like I said a lot of people don't know how Netflix is go are going to stay afloat in the long haul. So they have to try and make money in some way. No, and I agree. They've got to try to make money. I don't know if it's the right call but I'm also not <laughs> So um that's kind of the big news this week in my opinion. Yeah, um, there, there was you mentioned the um yeah. the face replacement CGI but I can't find the exact article that I'm trying to find. I can start talking about it a little bit until you Why find not? it. Uh, so James Dean. And as Philip DeFranco have said, uh, the dead guy or the porn star? The dead guy. Um, is going to be in another movie. Oh, hang on. I think I through that. CGI recreation. Was it and one? it... I know, like, they, they, they've said that the family is okay with it, which... Makes it slightly more okay in my brain, but it still doesn't feel right. Um, because this isn't... Someone put it the best, is is this a role that he would have taken? You know what I mean? Would he have said yes himself on it? Because um, like people compare it to the uh, Tarkin stuff with Peter Cushing. But Peter Cushing chose to play Tarkin. Yeah. So someone else coming in and having like Peter Cushing sort of overlapping their face... And acting as Tarkin um, makes sense because he, he, Peter Cushing chose to play that character. It's a character he wanted to. Uh, mind you, fun fact, he only Last played it in that My internet's messing up and keeps breaking into robots. One second. Got it. Okay, try again. La 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 la. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um Peter Cushing chose to play Tarkin. Um so comparing this to what they're doing with James Dean isn't exactly a one to one. Um because Peter Cushing if if he was given the chance to play the role again, I I believe in interviews he said he would. Um so I just noticed Discord is just weird right now. Yeah, I'll just say my opinion on it. Uh, using a dead actor who has no voice to say whether or not he would actually take the role isn't exactly right. It's not right. <clears throat> the man's dead. He can't say yes or no. Sure, the family can say yes or no, and they're fine with it. But still, it's now this man who is dead, who has not had a chance to prove who he is as a person, is now being thrown into all these different things that he has no choice over, for one. 
Two, they're taking away roles from other, like, from actual real-life human people who could play these things. And, like, we have celebrities and stars and actors now who are trying to make it into the screen. And you know what? We're choosing to make a CGI dead person do it over a real-life person. I mean, sure, they might have a person stand there for the basis of the CG, but that's not going to help that person's career take off. That's Cool. They're they're unless official. you're Andy Circus. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that laugh was terrible and slowed down robot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I imagine you got really slow for me to go I'm like oh, what was happening on his end? <laughs> no, it just it feels wrong. Like it doesn't seem right and that's kind of the general consensus of it is that it's not right. So, yeah. so there's that. Because my internet's acting up, even though I wish that, like, I'm sure there's more we could talk about news lies. Let's just kind of wrap it up here and uh, talk about what's happening next week, which we kind of can't see it at the moment because it's underneath the chat. So I'm going to move it real fast. There we go. There we are. So next week, we're talking good old fashioned movies. I'm just kidding. We're talking about uh, well it's Charlie's Angels, the 2000 version. And uh, you know, the new Charlie's Angels that's coming out. Oh joy. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, we, we let other people pick bad movies for us, but we picked bad movies for ourselves. This time. Hey, there were other options, and I said we could have just done a random week. But not to throw you under the bus, I did. Sug- I, I I said that there is this as the option, and you said, you know what? Why not? Let's hate ourselves a little bit. <laughs> Part of the problem with this month too was I thought Dark Fate had a chance. So it might be two really rough weeks and then us being really socially <laughs> awkward adults walking into a kid's film. I'm going to have to go I'm going to have to go Friday when I'm off work. Yeah, go late at morning. night when all the kids No, 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 no. Morning because all the kids school. are in school. <laughs> <laughs> Either go in the week late at night when Oh no, that's or... Thanksgiving week. No, 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 it's not Thanksgiving week. It was Thanksgiving week after that. Oh, before that. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> oh, uh, with that as well, uh, I know we didn't have Har Har this week. Uh, I worked. It is Q4. I'm going to be working a lot. My Currently, like, like the reason why I'm awake for this is because I had to go get um uh, that would wake me up for this show. Um, Thursday's podcast for Thanksgiving at the least, I'm not going to be there if it does happen. Um, but I'm going to say probably not going to happen because one, it's Thanksgiving, and two, it's Black Friday, and I work. As a, dur- I, I you work, work dur- at a department store too. So yes, I work retail. So I hope we have Target down during Black Friday, so everyone's yelling uh, at you and no one can buy a thing. Don't you fucking say it! <laughs> don't do that to me. I don't want that. That would be the worst case scenario. Um. Just but tell like, everybody, scatter! Go to the other stores before they close down! Go quick, you can still make it! <laughs> Come back tomorrow when it's actually Black Friday and not 10 o'clock the day before. <laughs> 5 o'clock the day before. Oh, God. People, they do these hours, people are crazy with the hours for stuff these days. What? Yeah, what's the point of having... Uh, it's Black Friday on Thursday, the day before. <laughs> All the stores are, like, every store does it earlier and earlier. It's nuts. I know. So. Like, welcome to the midnight release at 5 p.m. <laughs> Back in my day, Black Friday started at midnight. Back, didn't Black Friday really only happen to stores in the past two that were, like, low on money and they needed to make income quick? It wasn't like every single store was actually selling their products for the price that they should be sold at. <laughs> I don't know. I'm getting bitter. About I don't time. remember the dark times. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting bitter about capitalism as a, as a, Fair enough. 
as a millennial who wishes everything to be handed to him. Uh, let's talk about this. What's going on? <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, next week, uh, Charlie's Angels. Yeah, yeah, Charlie's Angels 2000s, 2019 versions. Uh, so yeah, uh, give us a like, follow, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, all that fun stuff. Check us out on YouTube. I've got a Discord where you can join us. Uh, join our, twi- our Follow us on Twitter where we post that we're going live and have some fun fun stuff every once in a while. Um, yeah, check us out Monday through Thursday. We have shows starting at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And yeah, that's about it. Thanks for joining us, everybody. And we will see you guys next week for uh, some Charlie's Angels action. <laughs> Bye. Bye.